Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. This week, we walk down memory lane with one of the most colorful badminton personalities of the 1980s, Malaysia's Misbun Siddiq. And we head to Serbia, where a badminton girls camp was all the buzz in Kragujevac. In the beginning, I don't like this badminton because this is my father's game. My favorite is soccer and even I represent the school. So he pushed me, persuade me. So he put one dollar there. If you win with my brother, he, you take this dollar. Thanks to a persistent and passionate father, Malaysian badminton witnessed the rise of the first of the five Siddiq brothers. Misbun Siddiq became a famous figure, synonymous with the country's successful badminton era of the 80s. Badminton Unlimited took our cameras to Malaysia and sat down with the man himself as he talked animatedly about a sport that became part of his DNA. I was very cheeky, I was very naughty. I always get punished because I dare to challenge him. But then he know how to, uh, how to corner me into, into badminton, whereby from there, from there I start to play for school and I start to play for district and I start to champion uh, Selangor. Born in Bunting, an agricultural town in Selangor, Misbun, under the guidance of his father, would become Malaysia's leading men's single shuttler. The once mischievous boy not only became a six-time national badminton champion, he also stormed into the international scene and captivated the global audience with his deceptive plays and big smashes. When I start to train, I always think of of uh, challenging the opponent, I don't care. So my training, even even when I was uh, when I start training, I came into the national squad when I was 18 years old. I already come into the Thomas Cup team. In 1978, I was 18 years old. My vision, I have vision. My vision is only I want to be the best player in the world. At 21, the precocious young man won his first international tournament at the 1981 German Open, becoming only the second Malaysian player to do so after the legendary Eddie Chung in 1957. Misbun was also known as the giant killer, with the likes of Indonesia's Lim Sui King, the best attacking player of his time, falling victim to the Selangor-born player. So did Denmark's 1982 All-England champion Morten Frost and they were not the only ones. I beat Prakas Padukon after he win All England. Uh, after two weeks All England, I beat him. I beat this um, a few of the good, good players, top players. Even I beat Hanjan, even I beat uh, this uh, uh, Luan Jin. It's because I like to challenge them. Whatever, I, I like to challenge them. I explore myself. Uh, how am I going to beat them? How, how am I going to challenge them? That's why it, the result come. Misbun might not be as decorated as his peers, but the 1981 and 83 National Sportsman of the Year was one of the most controversial and exciting shuttlers at that time. Besides being dubbed as a giant slayer, Misbun Siddiq was also well known for his maverick style on court. To him, his unorthodox character reflected his ambition. So that's what they call me uh, rebellious, they call, uh, they call, uh, eccentric, they, uh, because why this is something that, uh, because in the beginning, now, now, I te now I tell you, why I put that Mohican, uh, Mohican hairstyle, uh, why I put that blonde on the, on the head? I want to be the best player in the world. So that's why I put it there, nobody knows. So that's why it's not in the leg, uh, so I put in the head there. So I only think, if I see on the mirror, this is you, Miss Bond, you must get that number one. So that's why it, it comes to this eccentric. People, people sometimes don't like my character because I purposely make this kind of character rather than Miss Bond. I show you champion, uh, Miss Bond. So that means when I champion, Benci, I, I don't like you, but I like to see you play. Okay? I don't like you the way you are, but I like to see you play. After more than 10 years of captivating the badminton world at the highest level, Misbun decided to hang up his racket in 1990. Coaching stints soon came next for the 86 All England runner-up. He helped guide Malaysia to their fifth Thomas Cup victory in 1992, ending a 25-year wait for the coveted men's crown. 
but it was the emergence of a certain Lee Chong Wei in the early 2000s that drew the enigmatic Ms. Bun back into the limelight. So I told him that Chong Wei, you want to use Ferrari? First time when I see him, you ask him, so you want to use Ferrari? Are you crazy because I want to use Ferrari. No, they're very expensive car. I ask you, you want to use Ferrari or not? So he said, of course I want. Okay, if you want, I want two things from you. You give me your time and you give me your energy. So time. When I said 6 o'clock training, 5.30, you must be ready. So energy means tomorrow you have to smash 500 times. Well, per session 500 times. So that means you better sleep tonight. Then, so he followed, he trusted. He trusted what I told him. He also a very hardworking player. Uh, so, and he's quite a very intelligent player. Uh, and he's also a very cheeky player. So that chickenness outside. So I, I told him, if you are very cheeky, you put in the game. Then if you put in the game, this chickenness, you can be very cha and you can become champion. On the first day of training, he had a chat with the whole team, but he took me aside on the second day and asked me what my goal was. I told him I wanted to become a champion and be Malaysia's number one men's singles player. He said, I can do that and told me to give him time to groom me and trust his training methods. And as long as I followed his instructions, I would succeed. I owe my success to him and I feel very grateful to him. He has contributed a lot to my success and I will never forget him. Uh, Misbun was with Lee till he left the national coaching team in 2010, but the former player had never stopped coaching. As one of the founders of Nusa Masuri Badminton Club, Misbun continues to use his experience and expertise to guide the next generation of shuttlers. Together with his brothers Rahman and Jalani Siddiq, he travels around the country conducting badminton talent camps. Uh, because when before my father passed away, Miss Boon, when you are already at the top and you retire, please go down, uh, down and help this student. Give back to them. So that's why I come. Miss Boon Sidek, offbeat maybe, rebellious probably during his playing days, but his energy and passion for the racket sport has never diminished. because I don't drink coffee. Kate because she is pretty. Batman because he looks cooler. Ketchup because I sweat a lot if I eat chili food. Facebook because I don't use Twitter. Comedy because I like laughing. Time to test your badminton knowledge. In this week's trivia, we want you to name the youngest female player to win a World Super Series doubles title. Need a clue? This shuttler recently helped China clinch their 14th Uber Cup title. We'll reveal the answer after the break. When we return, we're in Kragujevac, Serbia, to report on a badminton initiative that's encouraging girls to take up the sport in the region. Get in touch with us on social media. Follow us on Twitter, tell us what you think of the latest news, or perhaps you just want to leave an encouraging post for your favorite player on Facebook. If you've got any comments or photos to share, do get connected with us on these social media platforms.
Before the break, we asked you to name the youngest female player to win a World Super Series doubles title. The answer is Tun Ching Tun. Earlier this year, the then 18-year-old clinched her first World Super Series title in women's doubles with Bao Yixin at the Xiamen Air Australian Open. The Chinese pair upset the world number four duo from Indonesia, Nitya Krishinda Maheswari and Gracia Polly in straight games. Chen's win makes her the first doubles player since Lee Yong Day to win a Super Series title before turning 19. Coincidentally, the previous youngest females doubles winner on record was her partner Bao, who was just a few weeks older than Chen when she won the 2011 Japan Open. Hello, I'm Johanna Höfle. My name is Julia Kmurovicova. I live in Austria. I'm from Slovakia. My name is Petra Mesaros from Hungary. My name is Alex Ariana. I'm from Romania and I am 14 years old. There was a real buzz within the badminton community in Eastern Europe when Serbia rolled out the sixth edition of the girls' camp. Held in one of the country's larger cities, Krakujevac, it was an initiative started in 2011 by badminton enthusiasts Andrea Todorovic and Maria Bolotovic after observing a worrying falling trend in women's participation in the sport. Discussing with the other coaches from uh, countries in our Balkan region and also some coaches from Denmark, we found that uh, there are not uh, so many girls in, uh, let, let's say, older categories in Serbia and this region. And then we found an idea to build a camp from girls and for the girls so they can build up social network uh, also beside the badminton and uh, to train in special circumstances in uh, atmosphere that can be built only with the girls in the hall and with the also female coaches because we also need uh, more female coaches to be involved in badminton sport. Strong support from Badminton Association of Serbia and Badminton Europe have been key to the success of this project since it started. Sporting objectives aside, it's another initiative promoting gender equality and women empowerment. I believe that badminton is the most wonderful Olympic sport in the world and it gathers boys and girls on the court, out of the court and uh, the girls and women in this sport are, have the equal position to men. Not just as a players, as a coach, as a managers as well. I believe that badminton is a perfect as a sport and also as a tool to give them a personal improvement, to, to give them the motivation for not just sport, sport achievements, and I, I believe educational achievements and, 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 and uh, personal achievements. This year's camp attracted teenagers from all over Europe with training sessions led by Scottish coach Debbie Lynch. There's a team of coaches that, uh, because we're, they are mostly national coaches, uh, I bring some coaches with from Denmark and from Sweden. We talk to the players of what the training is going to be so they know the focus of the training. We usually start with a type of warming up and then we go on to a practical like, uh, like a technical play and then uh, usually some games at the end. This year we are very proud that we have 28 girls from 8 uh, European countries. We are very proud that uh, we have girls from Sweden, Slovakia, Romania, Hungary, Austria, Macedonia and Croatia and of course Serbia. For the girls, the experience encompasses everything they've hoped for, from improving their game to making new friends. It also serves as encouragement to the stakeholders as they strive to continue these girls' engagement in the sport. I've learned how to move uh, faster in the court so as I can play better. I've learned um, a lot of new techniques and the thing I've enjoyed the most is making friends from other countries. I have opportunity to play uh, with uh, another, um, other uh, players from another countries and uh, to have a training with some other coach from another countries too. I think the most important thing for me is to see that the girls keep playing, uh, that the countries, that they're between the countries, that the, the girls, the further their development, and we can see when they get to 16, 17, 18 years old, that they are still playing, and they're playing on the national circuit throughout Europe. They, they are friends, and uh, we now have all the social medias that we have, 
and I see a lot because I'm on them myself quite a bit, that they're all talking to each other, and that's just fantastic. It's another fine example of sports, in this case badminton, bringing people together. Other nations are also drawing inspiration from the success of the Girls Camp project. We were named as a project of the year by the Badminton Europe Confederation in year 2013. So it's a big honor for us and give us some wind in our back so we can, uh, give, we can give our 100% and develop this project more and more. We heard that it's a unique concept. It was a few years uh, before. Now we see some similar projects in France, in Norway, also Denmark. So it's great. We are happy that we started with this and uh, that the concept is accepted by the other countries. Andrea and his team aren't about to rest on their laurels. They're already looking ahead to expand the ever-growing participation list as the camp hopes to play a role in bringing up the region's future talent. Our plan is to involve more and more countries and, uh, so, and to attract as many as possible girls. So we think that we'll have next year more than 30 girls from, let's say, 10 countries. I would be very happy if we achieve that. I would be very proud if you know, following the European Championship under 15, under 17, under 19, we'll have uh, girls that we can see today in our hall that uh, would be made us so proud and uh, show us that we are on the right way. With wonderful initiatives like the Girls Project, Europe might just unearth another Carolina Marin in the future. After the break, we speak to 14-year-old Canadian player Brian Young and tell you why he's one to watch for the future. Visit our YouTube channel, badmintonworld.tv. There are tournament highlights, plays of the day, as well as past matches to savor. Missed an episode of Badminton Unlimited? Do not fret. All the episodes are available for your viewing pleasure. All the best badminton clips are just a click away. Only the top eight singles players and doubles pairs in the 12-event strong MetLife BWF World Super Series circuit will make it to the season-ending Dubai World Super Series finals. Let's take a look at the destination Dubai rankings in men's singles at the halfway point. China's Tian Wei tops the list. Runner-up at the Yonex All England Open, semi-finalist in Indonesia and quarter-finalist in Singapore and Malaysia Tian has amassed the most points in Super Series so far this year. His senior compatriot Lin Dan is in second after claiming his sixth All England title and making it to the last four of the OUE Singapore Open. Denmark's Hans Christian Wittingus moves up a massive five places to number three after clinching his first World Super Series title of his career in Australia. The Danes' climb up the rankings sees Jana Jorgensen, Lee Chong Wei, Victor Axelsen and Son Wan Ho all move down a spot to 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th respectively. Chen Long, who has been outside the top 8 for much of 2016, moves up 4 places to make the cut at the moment in 8th after a quarter-final finish in Australia. The Destination Dubai rankings are updated every Thursday after a World Super Series tournament. To find out who's heading for the Dubai World Super Series Finals at the end of the year, log on to www.bwfworldsuperseries.com to check the latest information on rankings, news and results. Peru recently hosted the 25th Pan Am Junior Championships and the brightest talents from 18 nations across the Americas were on display at the two-week competition in Lima. Canada won the team event and in the individuals grabbed six gold, two silver and five bronze. I'm very pleased to be a Pan Am champion uh, because I got four golds this tournament. Um, I won singles, doubles and mixed as well as the team event and I'm very happy. Meet Brian Young, one of the tournament's shining stars. 
with an impressive haul of four gold medals. Badminton Unlimited tracked down the youngster from Canada to find out more about this rising talent. Born in Ontario, a province in Canada with a strong badminton community, Brian first picked up the racket in his pre-teens at Lee's Badminton Club, where his family plays the sport socially. When I first started badminton, I was eight and my parents introduced it to me. I went to a club for fun, and then I realized I really like badminton, so I continued with it. Brian's passion for badminton quickly developed from family fun to competitive sport. In a bid to raise his level of badminton, the then 11-year-old moved to another club to hone his skills. After around three years, I moved to a different club called E-Badminton Club, and that's where I currently train right now. Uh, the coaching at my new club was better, and the players I get to hit with, or like get to train with, were also better. So it was better for me as a player. Training with E Badminton Club, the Ontario player started to reap results at national and regional competitions that included a silver in men's singles and gold in doubles at the 2015 Junior Pan Am Games. His accolades on court saw him named Ontario Badminton Association Male Athlete of the Year the last three years. I'm very proud of being the Male Athlete of the Year for Ontario because it means that my results are the best in the province and that's something to be very proud of. But what's really impressive about his achievements is that Brian is only 14 years old. This year, he became Canada's youngest ever under-19 national champion in men's singles and mixed doubles. It's a remarkable feat considering he competed against older players, which was the case in the final when he battled with 17-year-old Kevin Lee for the men's singles crown. I was very happy because uh, I was playing like people who were a lot older than me, like three, three or four years older than me. Um, but, and I was able to win, and I was the youngest national champion to win U19 um, like singles and mixed. So I'm very happy because I can compete with older people at my age right now. It's clear Brian punches above his weight in Canada, and he was put to the test again in Peru recently when the 14-year-old competed against older players in the region. You have to use all of your like, ability to try and win, and like it won't be easy. Uh, it's like a lot harder because the people are, that are older than you, they have more strength and like they have, they're faster and they have better fitness. So you have to like really try hard to keep up with their like their shots and the way they play. So it's a lot harder and it's a lot more tiring. With three individual goals at the championships, he has shown he can match wits with the older boys in the Americas. The Canadian youngster looks like he's on the right track to make a big impact on the global scene in the future. Brian Young certainly has his ambition set on badminton's biggest prize. To play Olympics and represent Canada and try to place on the podium, like try to get third, second or first in the Olympics. The BWF fan site is the go-to place for all the information you'll need. Read about the latest badminton news around the world, feature articles, and check the tournament schedule, results, rankings, and statistics. Your one-stop website for all things badminton. Before we go, let's check the Badminton Unlimited calendar to see what tournaments are taking place around the world. Next week on Badminton Unlimited, we spend the day with Malaysia's Fu Kok Kiong and walk down memory lane with the legendary former men's single star. See you next week.